Hi there, welcome to Nippy Invest. Now I do get a lot of requests to do videos on companies in the ASX. I also get a lot of questions about my own personal investing style. And on top of all that, I have all these ideas permeating within my mind about potential future videos. Now unfortunately, even though I wish I could fulfill every single request, answer every single question, and do a video on every single idea, that pops up into my mind, I just don't have enough time. So unless you know how I can clone myself 10 times over, I do have to be a little bit picky and choosy about what videos I end up doing. So in today's video, what I have done is I've chosen the most requested company that has popped up in the comment sections of my videos. And that company is Lendlease. So you might be asking me, how is Lendlease the most requested company? Because it's a fairly boring company, it's not very exciting, it's not really growing. And the answer to that is all about persistence. So sometimes persistence can pay. And in this example, it's definitely paid because the one person has been requesting this company over and over again. It seems like in every single video I do, there's another comment from this person asking if I can analyze this company. So for that person, this video is for you and I hope you enjoy it. So Yuri, this video is for you. Hope you enjoy it. Now I'm not sure why this person has requested Lendlease over and over again. It's not really the most sexy company on the ASX. In fact, you could actually argue it's the complete opposite, a very unsexy story. So Lendlease has a market cap of $9 billion, revenue of $11 billion, so price to sales actually less than one. And that is something I actually do look for. But when you look at the operating cash flow and profit after tax in the trading 12 months, it both negative and that is a bad sign. So typically when I want to research a company that I haven't really done any work on in the past, I typically look at the past financial data and I did that with Lendlease. So typically what I do is I look at the revenue, operating cash flow, free cash flow and profit over a certain period. And in Lendlease case, I'm looking at the period between 2007 and 2019. What I'm gonna do is rule out 2020 because that has been affected by COVID-19. So in this slide, I'm looking at uh, the relationship between revenue and market cap. And then what I'm really looking for here is any sort of growth, particularly in revenue. And we're not really seeing this over this period of time. In fact, revenue has only grown at 1.3% per year during this period, and market cap has only grown at 0.5% during this period as well. So if you bought Lendlease back in 2007, your capital gains in this company has only grown at less than 1%, so it's almost grown at zero. So hopefully the dividends of this company has been worth holding this company through this period. Now on to operational cash flow and free cash flow, probably two of my favorite metrics to uh, judge the performance of a company over a period of time. And when I look at Lendlease, I see there's no growth here at all, and that's very important. So typically what I look for here is growth, continual growth, year on year growth of these two metrics. And if these two metrics are growing quicker than the market cap of a company, that's when I get excited. When I see no growth in operational cash flow or free cash flow, I don't get excited about a company at all. And you definitely see that with Lendlease. Now in this slide, what I'm looking at is some valuation metrics I do employ on occasion. So they are price to book, price to sale, and my favorite valuation metric, enterprise value to operational cash flow. So what I'm looking for here is any sort of dip in these metrics, and that could be suggesting that there is a good value play there. And the only dip we see enterprise value to operational cash flow is in 2011 and 2012 when that ratio was highly negative, and that's not something I really want to see. What I want to see is that being positive and a bit of a dip there. So when I see these two valuation metrics, I don't get interested at all in Lendlease over the years. So when you look at the financial and valuation metrics, that does suggest that there has not been any growth 
in this company at all. And you can actually see that when you look at the 15 year monthly chart of Lendlease. In fact, the share price high of this company was way back in 2007 when the share price got to about $20. And then again in the middle of 2018 when it got to that price again. But every single time it gets to that price, the share price pulls back. The cheapest price in Lendlease were both after financial crisis. So back in the GFC, the share price got down to $5 in 2009. And then again, during the COVID-19 financial panic, the share price got to just below $10 and bounced off that. So at this point in time, nothing to get excited here. If the share price did get down to about five or $6, I might get excited at that point in time, but it has a lot to go before it gets to that point, because currently it's about $13. Now, everything I've shown you during this presentation has been looking at the past performance of Lendlease. Now, the market is interested in what is happening with this company for the future. So if the share price does go on a run, it's suggesting that the market is excited about something the company is doing. So on August the 31st, 2020, Lendlease put out an announcement talking about a strategic shift in their operations. So this could be the catalyst for re-rating in the share price if they are successful in implementing this strategic shift. So what they're doing is divesting some non-core assets. So they've already sold out their engineering, US tech telecommunications, and US energy businesses, and they've already talking about selling out of their services division. So what they're doing is focusing on where they have the highest or greatest competitive advantage. And that is in urbanization projects. So really they're focusing on development, construction and investment. So if you do like uh, the potential future of Lendlease, I do highly recommend having a read of this announcement on August 31st and to see if this company is for you. Because right now the market isn't really thinking either way whether this strategic shift is going to be successful or not because we really haven't seen a run on of the share price, which I'll show you in the next slide. But if we do see the share price of Lendlease getting into a nice uptrend, the market might be thinking that this strategic shift is going to be successful. So yeah, the market is always thinking about the future. And so what I'm looking for with the Lendlease share price is any sort of uptrend developing. I did get a little bit excited about Lendlease back in late October, early November, because it looked like maybe there could have been a bit of a run in the share price. The share price took off really too quickly for my liking. In fact, it went from $12 all the way up to $15 in less than a month. And then we went through this medium to, we'll say short term downtrend from $15 and pulled back all the way to $11.50. So at this point in time, the market is not that convinced that this strategic shift in land lease is going to be overly successful. But if the share price does get into a nice little uptrend, there is a suggestion from the market this strategic shift is going to work. And I would also look for any signs in their financials when they release their full year financials in August 2021. I would look for any improvement in any sort of the financials. So what I'm looking for with Lendlease is that upwards trend in the share price and any sort of financial indication that this strategic shift is working. But at this point in time, Lendlease is just not for me. So Yuri and all else, I hope you've enjoyed this quick take on Lendlease. Now the whole point of me doing this video is to share an idea with you and hopefully to give you some inspiration to do some further research on this company, particularly if you like their strategic shift they're going through and maybe, maybe you can take a position if you like the research you do. I am not a financial advisor, so if you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's all for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it, Yuri. Talk to you later. Bye.